Clarence, I got to tell you, you are to me one of the great heroes of our country. You were just a teenager. You walked in that Woolworth, sat at the lunch counter. Were you afraid they were going to beat the daylights out of you or even kill you for that? Uh, not really, uh, Governor, because uh, God had prepared me in that I grew up in one of the worst neighborhoods in Greensboro. And so I had working knowledge of how everything worked, and I had become sick and tired of seeing how they were treating people at that particular point in time. Were, were your parents nervous? Did they know you were going to do this? No, did they you? didn't. They, they did not. <laughs> they they found, watched you on TV, huh? They found out when they showed the picture on, on uh, the newspaper. What did they say? Oh, well, they both, both were in favor of it because my father was a conservative, and yeah. believe it or not, a man with a third-grade education was a Republican all his life. That's awesome. You know, a lot of times people just assume that if you're African-American, you're going to be a liberal Democrat. Mm -hmm. You're not. No, How come? I started out as that because people told me that's what I was supposed to do. But when I went to do my research and started looking at the Republican Party and see what they stood for, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, as a matter of fact, when I was talking with my dad and I was espousing about the Democratic Party, he sat there and looked at me and said, son, you don't know your history. But I didn't listen to him because I had graduated from college and I thought I knew more than he did. So one of the things fascinating about you, you, uh, you went through that experience. You experienced true racism yes. in a way that a lot of people, they hear the word, they have no idea what that means. Compare what you experienced sitting at that lunch counter in 1960 versus when people today say everybody's a racist. Well, you know, most people don't know what a racist is. And see, racism is man-made, not God-created. Mm. And so I was raised up in a house where that we got along with uh, whites all, all of my life, but I grew up in an era of time known as Jim Crow, so I never went to an integrated school, was bused all my life, sit on the back of the bus. And what I realized was that uh, what I saw at Woolworths, for example, two water fountains, one saying color, one saying white, and when you went upstairs, you had a uh, lunch counter, but we could buy food, but we, couldn't, uh, we had to take it to go. So I had this great opportunity on this particular day, and it changed my life forever. You know, it didn't just change your life, it changed this country. Yes. in a way that needed to be changed. What happened to you, what happened to many African-American kids across this country is shameful. It is not a part of our past in history that any of us can do anything other than just grimace and say, God forgive us for ever letting that be a part. And Governor, I'm still fighting today. Hmm. I'm glad you're still fighting. Now you're fighting with this guy over here, not with, for, <laughs> I guess I should say. Let me be very careful. Congressman Mark Walker, good to have you here. Thank you, Governor. You and Clarence are big buddies. How'd that happen? Well, when I decided to run for United States Congress, this guy's a legend in North Carolina and should yes. be a lot more Around places. the country. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I sought him out, sought out his counsel. A, a great man of wisdom here and someone who's been a conservative Christian champion and he hasn't been afraid of it or ashamed of it. In fact, to the degree that sometimes the mass media, they've kind of left him on the sidelines, but the pictures always hung in our office since day one of him sitting there. In fact, if you go to the African American Museum, you'll see his picture hanging there as well. And it should be. Yes. You decided you're leaving Congress in order to do another political endeavor, run for the U.S. Senate in North Carolina. That is correct. Uh, it's an open seat. Our current senator is retiring. I've been told it to be the most expensive, high-profile seat in the country, but that's Probably. okay. We're praying that God goes before <laughs> us. Uh, but, but we want to continue to do what we've been able to do in central North Carolina and take it across statewide. And, Governor, that's to be a conservative champion, but also to be a bridge builder. I, I don't think that you have to choose one or the other, and that's one of the things that we've been committed to, and we want to continue to do that as a senator. Clarence, uh, even after the difficult times you had as a teenager, you served your country in the U.S. military. Yes. Um, you know, I think that speaks volumes. You had hope and confidence in a country mm -hmm. that wasn't always on your side. Right. Where did that come from? Because I, I find that admirable. Uh, it came from my dad uh, because he, I never heard him say anything bad about uh, the white race whatsoever. Mm. And as a matter of fact, right now, this cancel culture yeah. is the exact reverse of Jim Crow. Now they're teaching people that look like me to judge you by the color of your skin and not the content of your character, which is totally wrong. You know, you can say that. If I said it, I'd be called a racist. And it's the you truth. said it, and it is the truth. Yes. And I'm so grateful that you've had the courage to say that because 
I, I think a lot of times people look at our culture and they say, okay, there, there's a few racists here. I honestly don't know of anybody who is currently a racist. I grew up with some people, probably would maybe be that. But we've come a long way in this country. We have. And see, when I uh, have supported Donald Trump, people ask me why, because they call him a racist. And I ask them to clearly define what your definition of, of a racist is. And then I asked him, tell me one policy that he's put in place that's racist, because if he would have, then I would have called him out. Hmm. Wouldn't have any choice. So we had this great man that did great things for this country, and now he's no longer sitting in that office, which is a shame. Well, it is. We only have about 30 seconds left. So, Mark, I'm going to give you the 30 seconds sure. to tell us. How can a person like you, a conservative Christian Republican, go to Washington and work with people to get things done? Well, I, I think it comes with the two commandments that God gave us, one to love the Lord your God, but also to love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. That doesn't mean you don't stand up and push back. Uh, yeah. Some of the leaders that we see who literally try to entrap some of the poverty, some of the, it's, it's about control. But last year we became the only Republican in the United States House to win the United Negro College Foundation President's Award. You have to be intentional when you show up, build those relationships, and sometimes you may not always be the keynote speaker, but you should show up anyway. I couldn't agree more. Thank you, Mark and Clarence, for joining me tonight. You're what a well. blessing to have you guys here. You can follow Mark Walker on Twitter at Rep Mark Walker. It's on your screen. Hopefully soon to be Senator Mark Walker. Also, Clarence Henderson at G Clarence One.